How's it going everyone? So I'm here today to talk to you about the white James Hardy siding that we used on our new build, why we decided to go with it and whether or not we'd use it again. Okay, so I'm gonna take you for a tour around the house in a minute and get some close-ups of what this stuff looks like fully installed. I'm gonna start by saying that we agonized over the decision to use this stuff for many nights when the cost was nearly double that of using vinyl siding. And the reason was that when we started looking for what general style and theme we wanted for our house, of course we spent a lot of nights on Pinterest and Instagram and pouring through the internet and we stumbled across the modern farmhouse style and pretty much fell in love with it. It seemed like the white siding was really the only way to capture that feel that we were going for. And James Hardy, the cement fiber siding, seemed to be really the gold standard of what builders that were doing this kind of style were using. So anyways, there was a lot of back and forth about whether or not it was worth the price. And I'm gonna go over why it cost so much what the downsides of using it were and whether we would use it again. Okay guys, so we use the board and batten siding on most of the front of the house. This stuff comes in four by eight sheets and the battens go on afterwards. We use some of the lap siding up in the peak there and then as well, the rest of the side of the house and the back of the house are all done in that uh, five and a half inch lap siding. So, and you can see we use it on this bump out to give it a bit of a different texture and I'm gonna take you around the side of the house now. Okay, so here's a look at the transition from the board and batten style on the front over to the lap siding on the side of the house. Here's a look around the side and the back of the house. It's all in the five inch lap siding. Okay guys, so what really pushed us over the edge to decide to use this product was the fact that we were building a two-story home and if we did it in vinyl we didn't mind the look of some of the board and batten vinyl products even though the battens are much thinner you can't get this wide look where we have this we decided to go with the 16 inch spacing on our battens and you can actually do them in 24s or 12s or of course six if you wanted to any increment that's divisible by 48 because the board and batten comes in four by eight sheets which i can show you one of later you can pick any increment for how tight you want your battens to be but we thought that that 16 inch spacing look gave it a good beefy look and it fit for the size of the house when we looked at a lot of the vinyl products the spacing on that board and batten style was too tight and it looked too thin there's too many lines and then not to mention the next thing was that the white colors the tone of this white it looks very bright when you're up close and personal but when you hold it side by side with a vinyl white this is actually a fairly gray and dark tone of white versus some of the vinyls look more bleached out and they really pop and look fake and they don't look like uh, this is meant to replicate sort of an authentic painted wood look and we think it does a pretty good job it also has a cedar mill pattern to it so it looks more like wood okay so the lighting's not the best here in this section but you can see this board and batten siding and it does have a cedar mill pattern to it i don't know if you guys can see that that it actually has a Bit of it looks like a wood groove same with on the battens so this sheet goes on underneath first and then these battens get attached separately afterwards now there's a ton of caulking involved because these battens look best when they're caulked all the way down they don't have to be because this is a rain screen and there is strapping in behind this and that's part of what made it so expensive to put on is the strapping and the labor intensiveness to go with that. Even though that should be done with vinyl anyhow, most times where we're from here, people aren't doing it and they're saving a ton of cost that way. Now, when we went with white in the country, we knew that we were gonna have some troubles with bugs and cobwebs, and we certainly do. I don't know if you guys can see that up there and up in this porch section. It's a little bit dark, but there is a lot of spider webs. And we get dust, exactly, exhaust, trucks going down the road, we get dirt. But still, it's pretty minimal, and I would say it doesn't really change the overall look of it. It's never gotten dirty enough to really make it 
not look that fresh, clean look that it already does. Okay, so we love the look, and now let's talk about some of the cons of why we were about to opt against this product and what made it so hard to get it done and get it done affordably because those are really the biggest downsides. So one, there's not a lot of installers for this product in our area. Two, the product is not that easy to get. It's it's not nearly as, as widely held in stores as vinyl. So you have to special order it. If you under order, you take a long time to get material again when you have people waiting on the job. And if you over order, you can't really recoup much of the cost that you spent. The material is very breakable, it's very heavy, it's very dusty when you cut it, so the people that do install it charge a premium. And the material itself is a lot more expensive than vinyl. For example, when we look at the end of this gable up here, that section was extremely labor intensive to finish because of the scaffolding setup and the sheer weight of getting all this product, just the weight of lifting it off the ground and up. It was so much work that it just took so many hours and a lot of effort to get it up there. And these coming in four by eight sheets made it almost impossible. It all had to be cut before it got moved up top and then it had to be used in pieces. Now, when we go around the side, I'm gonna show you something as well. Now, one of the downsides of this siding that I knew about going in was that it telegraphs any issues with the framing. And you're gonna see when I look down the side here that you can't really notice it when you look straight on, but this siding definitely takes on a wave anywhere that the framing is not dead flat. Okay, so you see how it sort of follows the framing and you might get a bit of a wave to it. People spend a lot of money on this look and they're not too happy when they find out that it can be so wavy if their framing's not on point, but it definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to strap it and fur your strapping in and out like you should if you want it to be perfectly flat and not everyone's going to do it to the fullest degree because it could just add so much time and cost to the job. Okay, so talking details, there is a ton of metal work to go into this and a ton of prep for using this hardy in general. There's a lot of flashings. There's a flashing above this trim. There's one below it to kick out over the window. There's one continuously down along the bottom. And there's just a ton of things that make the install of this product a lot more labor intensive than vinyl. Okay guys, so we're in my garage now. I'm just gonna show you this stuff real quick. You can see how it's painted on one side and where it's bare on the other it's got a small one inch nailing strip at the top where your nails go and they're a special style of spiralized uh siding nail you cannot use roofing nails because this stuff has a ton of weight so it wants to fall down basically it's, it's you need some of the good pull out resistance but anyhow it's it's just this cement fibrous product makes a ton of dust when it gets cut it's really brittle and it's really heavy i just want to show you real quick with a small piece of this which by the way, I have a bunch left over in my garage because I'm worried if anything ever gets broken, I'm not gonna be able to get uh, replacement material in time for this stuff. So just to show you, look at this. It's basically like drywall, guys. Like it doesn't take much at all. I mean, I can go right over the edge here and you see how that stuff just snaps like that. So you definitely end up losing a bit of product because these things come in long 12 foot pieces. And when you try and move it a few at a time, they really start to sag and they tend to want to snap. So you lose some product that way and you end up wasting a bit of money. Okay, so we're in my garage now. I'm gonna show you the back of one of the pieces of the board and batten siding. There it is right there. You can see it's a full sheet and it, it's just this cement fiber. It's not painted on the back. And then there's what a piece of the trim looks like. It's hollowed out, got these channels for drainage and you can see the same thing. There's that cement fiber and this stuff is heavy. That leads me on to one of the next big downsides people have told me about this stuff, is that when you got things like hockey pucks being shot at your house and they miss and hit your siding, apparently it leaves a pretty bad mark and it's not that easy to fix. All right guys, well this isn't a hockey puck, but it's a small dumbbell plate. And I just wanna show you what happens if I hit this stuff. So it marks up. It doesn't break but it definitely takes on a stain and it chips. I don't know if you can see that. There's a pretty deep chip in there. And 
you're never really totally going to recover that. Now, mind you, vinyl might just break when that happens. Um, you can cover over this with a touch-up paint and some caulking. They do have color match touch-up, but that's definitely one of the potential downsides of this stuff versus wood. I wouldn't compare it to vinyl because I think it's more hardy than vinyl in that sense. It can take a bit more of a beating, but I don't think that wood would crack and chip uh, the same way that this stuff does versus some abuse from... Uh, kids, toys, games, that kind of thing. I gotta say thank you very much to our awesome installers. We haven't had a single bit of water trouble with this stuff and it's all thanks to the attention to detail they put into the flashings and as well as our awesome framers who did an amazing job at putting on tape to begin with on our exterior foam insulation. We're very happy with this product. Final conclusion is that we are glad that we used it we went a little overkill on our house in general and i don't think that we would recoup as much of the cost as we will if we had went with vinyl because i think it would have dumbed the whole look down so all in all we're happy with it and i think it's safe to say that we would use this product again in this application and subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this i'm going to continue to review our new build and i've got a bunch of exciting stuff coming up that i'm going to try and dive into some more building science and renovation advice as well as general advice in terms of how to buy, renovate and build your way towards your ideal home.